Hello, my name is Dal Washington. I'm the screenwriter of the up and coming motion picture film, um, Love by the Railroad. I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes of the making of the film, Love by the Railroad. This happened during Hurricane Sandy. I was stuck at New Haven train station. I could not get to work. All the trains was down, the people who fixed the trains, the custodians. I just started picking up the pen and all of a sudden I came up with this amazing story called Love by the Railroad. And when I'm trying to tell somebody that in the midst of your nothingness, God will bring something out of you. My first draft, I contacted this guy by the name of Larry Banks. Larry Banks is a, a professor at, at LIU University. And Larry Banks is the cinematographer who shot the movie Juice that everybody knew about. And he shot the HBO movie called Strap. Um, he worked with um, Forrest Whitaker on the movie Strap. And he worked with um, Tupac and Jermaine Hopkins and um, Epsom on the movie Juice. He's an excellent cinematographer. So I needed some help with Look the at the script. Once I realized that I was on to something and I was on to something big, I started reaching out to some talent. I started really reaching out to some talent. I started sending some stuff over to um some of the script over to Ellen DeGeneres. I called her office up. I said, listen, I'm working on a um an up and coming film, um Love by the Railroad. And I started sending um, Ellen DeGeneres and, and her team of people some of the script. And then I reached out to Steve Harvey because I see Ellen DeGeneres playing the supervisor where her office was probably somewhere over there. And then I started reaching out to Steve Harvey. I see Steve Harvey in the film being one of the railroad workers or, depending on his timing and what's his availability, he may be one of the comedians down at the um, club where all the railroad workers was going to go after work. And then I started reaching out to former boxing champ Michael Grant. Um, I reached out to um, Taylor Swift, but her management team said um, that she may be unavailable because of her touring schedule. But once I get the funding in place and I get the finances in place and the money is in the escrow account, I'm going to reach back out to Taylor Swift. Um, I'm also looking at somebody like Buster Rhymes to be in this film. Um, and then I, I called Benny Diggs from American Talent. American Talent represents some of the top Afro-American talent in the world. So Benny Diggs, he called me back. He's saying, listen, Coco and them from SWV, they like the script. Not only do they like the script, we want to help be a part of the soundtrack for the film. We're going to put together, not only help you with this um, film as actors and actresses, we want to be a part of putting together the hottest soundtrack. But all of a sudden, the railroad workers, now this is a flashback scene now. This is not Alan and Susan and Adrian. Them. This is Deborah's parents and, um, and Big Bigfoot parents. This is a flashback scene. And Deborah's mother is holding her stomach. And she starts filling her stomach. And the railroad workers is noticing Dolores is in pain. And the railroad workers start howling out, Dolores is about to have the baby. And she starts bending down. And the railroad workers, they start jumping up and down. They start jumping. They say, Dolores is about the to They're going to put pillows behind her head. And they're going to lay her down comfortably. Dolores is laying down. And they're telling her to push. Rebecca and them push all the workers. Old man Willie, Wilma, and all the railroad workers is telling her to push. And she's pushing. And she's pushing, and she's fighting, and Deborah, and she's pushing, and the baby is about to come out, and the baby is Deborah. 
and they hear sound. And double. And they're down there. And Deborah is born. She's a road, a railroad baby. Um, I'm looking at 50 Cent playing the character of Wayne. But this is a scene where the guys, they're going to be hanging out one night. And they're going to be broke. Because doing, doing while they're working, at lunchtime, these guys be playing cards, gambling. They be losing their whole paycheck. I mean, these guys, they be on their lunch break. Supervisor, like Ellen DeGeneres, right? If, if she played this character, she let, for one hour, she let them have fun. They can play cards. They can listen to music. They can smoke their little cigarettes. They can have a blast for an hour. But they also lose their whole paychecks, right? So now the guys, they broke. They go play some basketball. They run into this guy named Jake. Jake works at the um, other train station. And his boss needs some forklifts. Now, Tim and Alan and Wayne and all the guys, the male railroad workers, they broke. They trying to figure out what they're going to do to get money. Jake asked Tim, listen, my boss needs some forklifts and some trucks. And then um, Wayne is going to say, who I'm looking at 50 Cent to play this part, listen, our, our, our station just got some trucks and some um, forklifts in today. So Jake said, we'll give y'all money, lots of money, if you can get those trucks and forklifts out of y'all warehouse and get them into our warehouse, because my boss got a lot of money. He'll pay y'all on the spot. So the guys, they come, Alan and Tim and all of them and Wayne, they go into that warehouse over there where they work. Now these guys is making $20 an hour, $30 an hour, $50 an hour. But they go and steal some trucks from their own station, from their own warehouse, and take them to another warehouse where the other boss gives them all this cash. But while they stealing the forklifts and the trucks out of their warehouse, now if Ellen DeGeneres played this part, she's just watching them. She can't believe what she's seeing. And she's just counting. They took one truck. This is Miss Reynolds. They took two trucks. They took another forklift. They just emptying out the warehouse. Miss Reynolds is like, she's not saying nothing. And they take it over to the other warehouse and sell the forklift in the trucks to the other um, train station. I mean, Miss Reynolds is like, what is these guys just doing? So the next day, they show up to work like nothing's going on. Miss Reynolds said, excuse me, Wayne, Allen, Tim, Rebecca, I need to see y'all in the office for a minute. <laughs> These guys, they just stole the forklift in the trucks because they was broke and they needed some extra cash. And Miss Reynolds is the type of boss, man, she does anything for these guys. Why would you steal forklifts and trucks from the warehouse? So she talked to him. She said, where was y'all at last night? And she got pictures of them. <laughs> and Miss Reynolds, and she's so funny, man. And she said, listen, I need y'all to leave work and don't come back into the forklift and trucks is back in, in my warehouse. The guys, they start scratching their head. They said, Miss Reynolds. <laughs> These guys just stole the forklift, man. You know what? This is behind the scenes in the making of the movie Love by the Railroad, man. It's going to be funny. It's going to be hilarious. It's going to be a thriller. It's going to be a suspense, man. Just stay tuned. I'm going to take my film audience, the moviegoers, on a ride, come with me on this ride, come with me on this train ride to the Oscars, and cut.